Yeah, shoot, I was on the side of the highway trying to kill myself, trying to off me. You know, you're darn right I did. Um, I went to a phase that God was calling me collect. I ain't gonna accept the charges because I knew it was gonna cost me them draws. <laughs> right? It was gonna cost me and De Delilah and Jezebel and Sue and Hella. And uh, yeah, I, 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 hey man, I can do a lot of things, but I can't do this now, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And I ain't wanna be fake with it, I ain't wanna be phony with it. So I was trying to clean up before I go to the Lord. You know, I was trying to put a new suit on, then you go there for Easter. I, I, I was trying to get that stuff together, and I couldn't. And I was playing baseball at the time, man, and uh, going through the, my first divorce, so now your kids are taken from you, and you know that's the only thing you feel like love you, because ain't nothing else is real. The only thing that you feel like love you is that thing that came out your, your seed. So I'm like, dang, my kid's gone, I'm still here. And I think I was three for four that day, man, about three stolen bases. And I was, I, Double Mighty Man is unstable in all his ways. And I was going down the highway, Cincinnati, and I was playing Kurt Franklin, Conqueror. Ironic, I'm about to off myself and I'm playing Conqueror. What kind of Conqueror are you, you punk? You sitting up there looking in the rear view, looking in the side view, and you sitting up there trying to off yourself. I ran my car up the highway, dog. Mm. And I got to the end, it was like, and I was still here. And I remember the police came down and they knocked on my window. They said, you all right? I said, yeah. They said, somebody ran you off the road? I said, no. Because I wasn't a liar. I've never been a liar and I told the truth. And my attorney at the time, Eugene Parker, who's passed now, he said, look, either I'm going to get you some help or we're going to have to come step away from the game and get yourself together some type of way. Because this is real. And I said, all right. And he introduced me to this gentleman named Pastor David Forbes from Columbus, Ohio. I was in Cincinnati, so he, I made the drive to him and he made the drive to me and I start spiritual like consultation. What age were you at this point? Shoot, 20, 20 some man, I think mid or late 20s. No, no, about late 20s, 28, 29, something like that. And I was going through it though, going through it. and and. But no See, one would have known, not to no, cut you off, because you were no, uh, no, uh, you, you a pro, pro <coughs> bowler on the football it, field and handling your bits on the baseball. We, 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 we him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody checking him, because mm -hmm. he him. Mm -hmm. He the life of the party. He the thing that keeps it going. He He's him. He got it all together. And I'm sitting up here taking pills right in front of these guys, and they still don't see me. Because they saw Prime, man. They ain't see Dion crying out for help. They saw Prime. They saw that mm -hmm. dude, man. And uh, it was sad, but I remember the day I was on my knees, dog. Oh, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Oh, I was on my <laughs> knees in that, that room in Cincinnati, Ohio. And it was real, it, it was like the wind came in and papers was flying around the room and it was, the lights bright as like a 747 could have landed in there. And I remember saying, Lord, if that's you, take me. Lord, take me, take me. Lord, mm -hmm. take me, take me, take me. If that's you, take me, take me, take me. I was reciting it like that. And uh, that's when I gave my life to the Lord. And I thought everything was going to be all right. And I didn't know that I would be judged by the people that I thought would protect me. They was. I thought that was my safe haven, that I'm going to get saved now, so y'all got my back. But I'm looking at y'all and y'all saying he ain't saved, he ain't this, he ain't that. He... So no, no, what you're really saying, if you had all the things that I have, that you can do this instead of giving me direction and protection mm -hmm. and, and putting your arms around me, man. And that broke me, dog, like that. Because I went for comfort and you gave me pain. Mm. So you see what I'm saying? Towards mm. the end, it's a similar topic of you have these celebrities or, you know, popular people mm -hmm. come into the church and they're feeling judged and it's pushing them away, adding to their pain. What do you what do you think about what Deion said? I don't know, man. I think not even just in the celebrity world. I think, unfortunately, if I'm honest, you hear more stories like that than you hear stories of people saying I was loved and embraced by the church mm -hmm. when I came. Mm -hmm. I was a person. I was a victim of that. When I started hanging around, shout out to dude, Young Noah. 
his homeboy, they were like, man, why you hanging with him, man? He 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 bad news. This, this. I'm like, dang, I thought they were church. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And they came back and apologized years later. You know what I'm saying? But you see more often than not, people feeling judged. They're feeling ostracized. They People looking at them sideways. Like, um, I think about the scripture in James where they say don't show no partiality. Like, I've seen situations where somebody who may have been homeless or somebody comes into the church and look at them sideways. Somebody who we know evidently is in the streets or doing certain things, they come to the service. And one dude told him I was at the church. He said, you got to make a choice. You're going to be in the streets or you're going to be in the church. And we see this dude, he put a suit on and everything because that's what he think he had to do to go to church. He's storming out the door. Me and my homeboy catch him like, what's up, what's going on? He like, man, these folks jumping to me. He said, if I'm going to come to church, man, I got to get right right now. I said, bro, take the suit off. Cause, exactly. I said, bro, take the suit off because it's obvious that ain't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, ain't, yeah. that ain't it. The suit too big, you know what I'm saying? Like, to take that <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> And we gonna go back in the church with you. We gonna go in there together and go yeah. to the service. And we talked to him, you know, talking to the pastor after that. And the young man went up there and gave his life to the Lord. Yeah. But yeah. the initial presentation, when he went in, they were like, if you gonna come in here, you better get out in the street. He like, dang, I just came in here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this ain't what I expected. Yeah. So I think it's, it's something to be said about the way we approach people, like. Yeah, this is good. Um, uh, M. Ball said, I mean, it happened to Paul too. I guess this is something new Christians have always dealt with. Mm -hmm. So if you remember Paul, when he mm -hmm. when he first got converted, remember he used to kill Christians. So they were mm -hmm. like, I don't know about this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He might be, you know, yeah, trying to, and he want them to, come up trying to infiltrate, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so how do you deal with that? Because we just talked about it with B. Simone, where I think the Christians' reaction when they see somebody of um, importance, I guess, like, right, importance in the culture. They convert to Christianity, but they're still saying things that are like, that ain't right. That ain't right. Your, your, your feeling is, oh, no, this could be a wolf. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance that caution feeling you get as a Christian with, no, I need to embrace this person and love them because they're trying? How, how, do, you, how do you do that? I think a lot of people's reputation um, come before them, though. You know what I'm saying? When you come to somebody's church, if, mm -hmm. um, from, from the street boys, from the dope boys mm -hmm. to the, you know, to... A celebrity, somebody known in the community or somebody known worldwide or somebody just known in general, your reputation comes. So it's like like you do have those people that are very judgmental. You got to be like, super tied. Mm -hmm. You got to do this. You got to yeah, do all that. I knew it. But then you also have people that are saying they're Christians and if they're wilding now and they're, and they're saying they're Christians, mm -hmm. it's just a, a, a dichotomy where the church is very – Cautious, and I really and you you said it earlier, mm. or you said it a couple of shows ago. Kanye really kind of messed it up for a lot of celebrities going forward because it's like, because now it's like you getting you giving people the side eye because you don't know if this person is really coming to you because yeah, especially if you minutes. give especially if you give them your resources if you're saying hey bro here's my stage I want you to share your story to the world blah 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 and I'm not saying that that won't happen to people because of life or whatever. But I just think sometimes as the church, we do give people platforms very quickly and stuff of that nature. But then at the same time, it's just for some people, like you said, going back to Paul, but Paul was known for killing Christians, killing people, doing all that stuff. And when he got saved, people were giving the side out like, yo, is this legit? Is this it? So if, if a, a dope boy in the neighborhood... We used to, if we doing outreach and he coming up to us, like, yo, y'all got to leave in five minutes. Man, man we like, yo. I was going to say real quick, yeah. man, when you a fisher of men, like, you think about how they fish back then. Yeah. They, they threw a net in the water. Yeah. You think only fish came in there all the time? Mm -hmm. Like, you might get a boot. You might get an <laughs> eel. You yeah. might, Fact. ain't no telling. Yeah. Like, yeah. people yeah. in church, we got to be mature enough to know we going out here fishing, you're not going to always pull out that perfect kick. No, no, we, no, no. We, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying, I think sometimes people's representation, they're scared. And, and that's, and that's us as the church to break the fear off of us mm -hmm. to have like, God, okay, we trust you with this person coming to our church. Mm -hmm. We trust you, but we know you know what I'm saying? You you ain't dumb. You gonna still have discernment. You yeah. know how if you doing outreach in a serve in a, in a community and somebody telling you, hey man, y'all this need to be wrapped up in like in, in two hours, and he come to your church and you like, oh snap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of like a, when when I see people come at me or come at other people with that, y'all know that that old mm hmm type personality yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. that exposes people who judge is really exposing something within them. Mm. Yeah, that's right. I really feel that way. I, right. I I feel that people that don't really allow love, if if they're if they're not filled with the spirit and filled with God's love, which is supposed to cover, 
mm-hmm. um, which is it's, it's supposed to really help people through what they're going yeah. through. Yeah, that mm-hmm, is really exposing something in them. It's like it's like me knowing like I know what that looks like. Yeah, I know what you're doing. You know, <laughs> yeah, you you doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of really exposing something within them. You can tell when when you are approached by someone that knows that say, hey, we all sin and come short, mm-hmm. right? And they, they have grace because they've been extended grace and they can walk with you mm-hmm. as opposed to somebody that's pointing at you. Mm-hmm. That's true. And so I think what that's Christians true. do, we do more pointing mm-hmm. and instead of covering. And you have to, if you have the spirit of discernment, you can really dis- discern where, that, where that's coming from. Yeah. And it's easy with platforms. And I think it's a lot of people that want to be famous and want to be on platforms. They'll turn, they'll turn them a comment and try to turn it into a whole ministry and create mm-hmm. them a platform yeah. or a podcast yeah. off of them being what you call those internet thugs. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so I, I think we have to be careful. Everybody's not, not really walking in the true spirit of, of Christ. And you can judge that tree by the fruit, yeah. you know, by yeah. the way they talk yeah. and how they're approaching, and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you so have I, something to say? Yep, I think uh, <laughs> I think you can love and accept somebody into the body of Christ without giving them a platform so soon. Mm-hmm. I think with celebrities. Um, when they do come to Christ or they do profess Christ, the first thing is for them to like go to a mega church and mega pastor, uh, share their testimonies. And I don't think that that's a bad thing, but I think also we have to be wise and kind of like how we do things because then they become this face of like for a minute. I think they were trying to paint Kanye West as like the picture for like Christian hip hop or like gospel hip hop mm-hmm. when he came out with Jesus is a king. And I'm like, w- we've been doing this. You know what I mean? Like, we, <laughs> yeah. we don't really get that type of uh, treatment like that, but like, we've been doing this. Um, and then something like what happened to Kanye West kind of falls through and it seems like it's a sham. I think if we really want people to know and love Christ, then we really have to disciple them. Like, yeah. Give them a minute to be able to process what just happened in their life instead of just first thing is like, oh, we got to send this to the masses because this really is a spiritual battle. And if you're not on top of the spiritual thing, then that thing, what could be a real seed that was planted in their life could be attacked and it could just make the church look bad. It's like, no, that probably was a real transformation in somebody's life. But because nobody really took the time to disciple that disciple that person and, and put them in front of cameras. Um, the enemy saw the potential of that, and it was attacked. Well, that's that's my question. Was the Kanye thing a sham, or was it a failure of the church? I think I think the discipleship part of it was two. It was a twofold situation. Um, Kanye, honestly, in my personal opinion, and from people I we we know, have said that you can't tell him no. Like he is like. Hey, can I do this? You say no. Hey, can I do this? You say no. Hey, can I do this? Yeah, okay, we going. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I can't tell you no, that discipleship is going to be hard for you if I can't tell you no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. being real. And I think, I think, like she just said, like I think it was a real authentic um, place he was at. I mean, because you can, you kind of seen it on the show with him in the Kardashian show when he was telling her like, "Hey, you, you dressing a little." I mean, I, I know how I got you, but at the same time, can you kind of tone it down? <laughs> like, he was saying stuff like that. And I think it was it was real. It was real. But I think for them, to me personally, I think a celebrity, if you get saved, I would get discipleship. And we keep saying that for a reason. Man, you don't have to. But no. you know, good and well, the church see a celebrity, the first thing they're going to oh, do is they gonna they gonna put them no, on no, stage. No, no, no. Yeah. If, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm a celebrity and I'm watching this, going forward, I would be like, hey, I don't know much about Christ. I want to get to know him. What can I serve? Can I can I um can somebody walk me through this? Yeah. See, that's the problem. Because to me, I don't want to be out front and I don't know nothing. Or out front, or I'm just learning it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah that's yeah. the problem though. Why should he have to tell the church that? Yeah. The church should yeah. already know. This have dude, the wisdom. This, yeah, he should yeah. already know this is an immature believer. Just because he got a platform on me, we need to give him a stake. Cause yeah. just because he's famous doesn't mean he's spiritually mature. The gifted doesn't mean yeah. maturity. A lot so of times me, we see it. Like a lot of times the church can look from abroad and see it, but it takes someone like you said, like mm-hmm. making that phone call to say, Hey brother. You know what I mean? It takes somebody listening to, because I'm pretty sure with all these celebrities, somebody, the, the spirit is moving in somebody to give them a call and allow that word and give them that truth. That truth that you were talking about mm-hmm. that cuts through bone and marrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like really hit them with it. I love how Reese grabbed a Gabbana 
John uh, yeah. John, and mm-hmm. he was on the show last mm-hmm. time, yeah. and yeah. he was talking about he had to go back and apologize to Whoa Vicky, and this is real stuff it's from the stuff she got online, and was like, man, y'all praising him, and he's like this, and he's really, and he mm-hmm. went, and he just, man, I love how he handled it. He said, man, I was I was broken, mm-hmm. and I needed yeah, it. Good. I was broken, yeah. and it it helped heal her, but he was being disciple. Uncle Reese, shout out to Uncle Reese, shout out to Donk, mm-hmm. those guys took the necessary steps to call him and say brother and bring him in. And so shows like this where people can see this, it'll allow people to be bold enough to make that call and say, hey, brother, you're going to need, you need some help. You know know what the problem is? (laughs) The problem is a lot of times when celebrities come to Christ, the people who they gravitate to or gravitate around them are people we don't trust. (laughs) <laughs> so Christians see it and they're like, "Why are you talking to him? You right. don't, he don't say nothing godly." You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the issue: is a celebrity celebrities go to celebrity pastors, and a lot of celebrity pastors we don't think are legit. Yeah. So uh, what do you do in that? Well, well, I think because they're popular, you ain't gonna go to somebody you don't really know, or you go to somebody or some or somebody they 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 probably in a local community and a person. The pastor probably know who they are, and they don't know who the pastor is. And the pastor may be like, my gym, my, my, my gym about to get fixed. Man, they going to go to Carl relate. Lentz. It's Rick because Rick they Rick can Rick. relate. It's probably like the relatability of yeah, being too. known. You know and I'm known. You love Christ. I love Christ. We both out here. Man, I see you walk through. People talk about you, dog you yeah. out, man. I'm, help, help me, bro. And yeah. so they're just seen. But still, I believe that. There are people behind the scenes that can get close enough to these people, man, to where they can really walk with them. Well, um, thank God uh, Dion seems like he's made it through that time because yeah. this was years ago mm-hmm. that yeah, he's yeah, talking yeah. about, and he's still bold for God. And, you know, you may look at him and say, oh, well, he ain't doing this right and this right, but he's clearly serious That about brother God. got a ministry for men because I've, I've, yeah. every, every time Colorado plays, he has a bunch of celebrity Black men on the sideline yeah. with them boys, like and he behind them. So I'm saying, yeah. like, once his coaching career is pretty much over, and God is like, okay, I want you to go in this direction. He got a serious ministry for like, especially urban black men. Like, 